Okay, so good morning. It is early. Please excuse my appearance. <laughs> um, this morning though, I just felt um, impressed to help some people out who want to develop a um, habit of morning prayer. And I'm gonna tell you people, we love our sleep. We do need sleep. I don't like sleeping because I feel like I could be learning something, <laughs> using those hours for learning. But Yehovah has uh, built in us a need for rest. So uh, we have to do that. And it can be difficult to let go of our desire to sleep to get up before we have to get up for work and kids, uh, get up earlier than those things, and lose sleep in order to develop the habit of prayer. But if you do, you will never be the same again. We find in scripture that Yeshua was a man of prayer. Oh, did he pray? And any of the great, tremendous things that happened in Scripture were preceded by prayer. We see Hannah before giving birth to the prophet uh, Shemuel. Oh, she prayed. They thought she was drunk at the altar because she was praying so intensely. Nothing was coming out, but her lips were moving. Um, God heard that prayer, that supplication out of her suffering of being barren uh, and he answered that prayer and blessed her to be, to conceive. Likewise, um, men of faith in the scriptures were men of prayer. So we need to get this discipline down and get back to praying. And there'll be daily distractions to try to keep you from getting back into prayer. There'll be distractions to try to throw you off once you have established a set time of prayer. But uh, I just thought this morning to give you some tips and I think I'll write, I'll, I'll write a little blog too and post that. For me, what has really helped is having a place of prayer. And I don't think I can turn the screen right now that I'm filming, but uh, oh, maybe I can pause and show it to you. Okay, so this is a little area that I have carved out uh, for my prayer space here in Virginia, and I've already got pictures up online of my prayer space in uh, in Iowa. And I'm not trying to expose my secret because I know that Yeshua said to go pray in secret. Okay, I'm going to swing the camera back around with me. don't mean to make you guys dizzy. Um, but I'm not trying to promote myself. What I'm trying to do is try to help someone get over the hump of, not, of prayerlessness, okay? And so what you just saw was um, I make sure my prayer space has nice lighting, uh, a lamp, uh, so that I can write down the things that I feel impressed God is saying or what I feel impressed to pray for. And uh, I have a talit, uh, which I recommend for every believer to get once you do, do a little bit of homework on what a talit is and what the fringes mean, what the fringes mean. Who in scripture wore a talit? And you'll, you'll want one. You'll want, trust me, you'll want one for your prayer time. It's just kind of special, guys. Anyway, I'll make you do your homework on that. I won't tell you. For women, I recommend a warm sweater in the morning uh, I, on the edge of my little uh, couch. I won't swing around and show you the bed and stuff. But um, I have a shawl, uh, just a warm shawl, uh, because we can be cold in the morning. Uh, and so I recommend having an area, have an area established for prayer. It doesn't have to be a big area. Uh, 
It can be a small corner of a room. It doesn't have to be a whole room. That will help. Setting an alarm for prayer. Not just saying, you know, just waking up and trying to do it. Setting an alarm for prayer has helped me a lot to get up. And finally, having a routine to prepare for prayer has helped me a lot. Okay, so you might say a routine. Well, I was reading uh, in the Torah where the sons of Aharon, Aaron, were told to wash their hands and their feet. And this was after all of their preparation for the garments that they were supposed to wear and their duties. Before they began to do their duties uh, of ministering, they were to go to the basin and they were to wash their hands and feet. And I thought that was interesting. Now I know it was probably dusty there and you don't come before God with dirty feet. I also, you know, you're sacrificing animals and so you want to keep your hands clean. But how is it applicable? Well, we get up and wash our face and brush our teeth to go to work. Um, why wouldn't we do that before we pray? I mean, it's not for God. It's kind of for you as you sit there and pray <laughs> early in the morning. Maybe you wouldn't mind your breath after a while, but it, it's practical, guys and the practicalness uh, of it. I, I just have to say, an interesting thing about washing your hands and washing your feet and, your, and, and then cleansing and putting on some oil on your skin, on your hands, and yeah, even putting a little oil and lotion on your feet, I found it to be rather, uh, blah, blah, rather, rather awakening and refreshing. I mean, it, and it's interesting, while I'm in there, I start praying and thanking God for waking me up and thanking Him that I can have a time of prayer with Him. And I, I begin to thank God for the modern conveniences that I'm enjoying, that I can turn on the spigot in my bathroom and water flows out. And I have all these lotions and soaps that I have access to. Just, I keep stocked. What a blessing. Well, then that blessing turns my mind towards all of the horrific news stories we've heard of people being kidnapped and held against their will and dragged out into jungles, Boko Haram comes to mind. And the women who were sold in Mosul after ISIS invaded their towns and slaughtered their families before their eyes and then turned them into concubines, war captives. I think about those young women and here I am safe and warm, able to refresh myself and put on lotions and oils and I begin to pray for them. And I, I don't know, you guys, you know, I know some of them were Yetzidi, they weren't Christian, M many were Christian, but we're supposed to remember those who are enslaved and taken as though we were imprisoned ourselves. Do we pray for them with that kind of frequency? I would be praying for myself every day if I was taken as a war captive. Uh, um, all of that really gets you awake. It gets your mind off of going back into that nice dark room with your blankets and curling up and covering up. I'm just trying to give you some tips and pointers so that we, I can be reminded and you can have, uh, you can have the impetus to think of the practical things that will get you into prayer time. I'm actually thinking this morning about going upstairs and brewing a cup of coffee just to help me wake up and not go back into the bedroom and go to bed. Hope this helps as you reflect on how to be a person that walks as he walked, lives as he lived, which means, folks, we need to return to Torah. I love you. And Shalom Mishpocha.